Despite what we have read in fairy tales, and despite what we have seen in the movies, mirrors do not lie to us. They tell us. They don't tell us what we want to hear, do they? They don't show us what we want to see. Mirrors reflect the truth. They show us the way that we, we really look. They don't lie. We may lie on social media. We may lie to the people around us. We may even lie to ourselves. But when we look in the mirror, as difficult as it may be sometimes, we see a reflection of the truth. And so it is when we read the Bible. It is a reflection of the truth of God. And so it is not surprising that an effective weapon of Satan, who is called the father of lies in John chapter 8, perhaps his most effective weapon is to counterfeit the truth of the Bible, to manipulate it with the intent of deceiving us so that we do not trust the truth of the Word of God. And sadly, today, we live in a world that is dominated by his lies. Though many times, those lies are disguised as the truth. And this confusion is clearly seen when it comes to an understanding of the truth of creation that uh, we find in Genesis chapter 1. And certainly, uh, we expect this confusion from those who do not belong to Jesus Christ, since we know that they are still under the influence of the enemy. But what is amazing is that many of us who claim to belong to Christ are just as confused. We are just as deceived as they are. But the fact is that a clear understanding of the truth of creation is essential for us so that we might understand who we are, so that we might understand where we came from, and so that we might understand why God has created us. Mankind is the crown of his creation. We are the reason that he created the world, the reason that he created the entire universe, so that he could redeem a people from their sin in order to worship and to adore his son in the glory of heaven forever. But Satan has deceived many people into thinking that the simple, straightforward account of creation that we find in the book of Genesis is not true that it cannot be trusted, that it cannot be taken literally, that it cannot be taken seriously. And if that is what you think, then you are deceived already. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to the truth and he will set you free from those lies before it is too late. And the truth is this, that all that God has done 
in creating the earth and the sky and the heavens, he has done to prepare a place for us, a place where we can worship him as our creator. He is our creator. As we're reminded in Malachi chapter 2, verse 10, where it says, Has not God created us all? And unbelief in that truth, unbelief in his word from Genesis all the way to Revelation is, in fact, rebellion against him. And so it will bring divine judgment down upon us. But sadly, it says in Romans chapter 1, many have exchanged that truth for a lie. And they worship the creature rather than the creator. So, as we come to verse 24 of Genesis chapter 1, we come to the final day of creation. We come to the sixth day where it says, then God spoke again. He said, let the earth bring forth living creatures. Nefesh in Hebrew. Animals. Animals on the earth. Animals that live and that move and that breathe and that are conscious of their surroundings. All of them created after their kind, it says, mean in Hebrew, according to their species. And though there might be some variation within that species, they are limited in their variation because of their species. A dog cannot become a cat. And God divided those animals into three groups, into three categories. First, we are told there were, there were cattle, behemah in Hebrew, animals that could be trained and domesticated. Animals that were, were useful, could become useful to man. Livestock. And then, we're told, there were creeping things. Remes in Hebrew. Things that crawled across the ground. Animals that were close to the ground, like reptiles and rodents and insects. And at the same time that he created these animals, we're told God also created the beasts of the earth. Hayah in Hebrew, the untamed animals, the wild beasts that roamed the earth. All, we are told, created after their kind. All according to their species. And it says that it was so. God spoke. God spoke. And it was accomplished at that very moment of time. And so he made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and he made the cattle after their kind, and he made everything that creeps on the ground after its kind. And it says in verse 25, God saw that it was good. Tov in Hebrew. That it was beneficial to his plan. A creation that was ready for the crown of his creation, 
a creation that was ready for mankind, that was ready for us, so that we might give glory to our Creator. Then, verse 26, it does not say, let there be, which is what he said when he brought forth the rest of his creation. It says something different here, doesn't it? This is different. This is personal. Instead, in verse 26, God the Father said to God the Son and to God the Holy Spirit in an inward plurality, but at the same time in an outward singularity, in a mystery, in something that we don't fully understand, a mystery that uh, has not been revealed to us. But we are told, he said, let us make something unlike anything that we have made. Let us make man, Adam in Hebrew, mankind. Let us make a, a rational, a morally responsible being. Let us make a creation that has the capacity to love and, and to have fellowship with God. Let us make a creation that can think and that can reason, that can feel emotion, and that can live in accord with the will of God. A creation that can worship God, their creator. A creation, it says, in our image. Selah in Hebrew. A creation that in some way, some way, is a visual expression of God according to the likeness of God. Damuth in Hebrew. A creation that is patterned after the creator. A unique creation with the stamp of God upon us. A declaration that we belong to him. Yes, we live in an environment, the same environment as the rest of his creation. But we have been set apart by him, set apart to him. We have been set apart to love him, set apart to worship him in a relationship with him, set apart to obey him, with eternity set in our hearts, we are told in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Yet we are a creation that is made of flesh and blood. We have been fashioned from the dust of the earth. And God said, let them rule. Rada in Hebrew. Let them have the responsibility to dominate and to care for the rest of creation, to function as representatives of God on this earth, ruling over the fish of the sea, ruling over the birds of the sky and, and over the cattle and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the ground. And so God created man, mankind, in his own image as an expression to some extent of the Creator. We have been created in the image of God, and so God created mankind, and we are told He created us as male, and some of us He created as female to enhance 
one another, to complement one another, to work together with one another in harmony, in unity, as a family, all for the glory of God. We were to be the crown of his creation. And we are told God bless them, Barach in Hebrew. He showed them favor. He gave them the gift of life. And God was pleased with what he created. And so in verse 28, he said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, populate the earth with with those who will also give glory to God and subdue the earth. Kalash in Hebrew, use the resources of the earth, the resources I have created in the service of God. Bring the earth into submission for the glory of God. You are to rule. You are to have authority over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and and over every living thing that moves and that breathes on the earth. And then God said in verse 29, Behold, in Hebrew, look and see. I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth. And I've given you every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be a continual supply of food for you. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves and breathes on the earth, everything which has life. To them I have given every green plant for food as well. God's provision for his creation. God's provision for us. And it was so, we are told in verse 30. God spoke and it was accomplished. And God saw all that he had made. And there was no sin, there was no death, there was no decay, there was only harmony, unity, and peace, a paradise created for us. And behold, it says in verse 31, it was all very good. Meod in Hebrew. It was exceedingly good. It was perfect. And there was evening, and there was morning. The sixth day, the final day of the creation of God. So the question is this What do we see? when we look in the mirror. Remember, the mirror does not lie. Do we see a reflection of who we were created to be? Do we see a reflection? Do we see a reflection of Christ Jesus, our Lord? listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.